Hello there. Maybe I'll begin by talking about current events. This is from Beelzebub. The manifestations of this harmful property in the common presence of people becomes particularly intense during such events as wars, revolutions, civil wars and so on. At such times a state recognizable even by them is most acutely manifested under the influence of which with rare exceptions they all fall and which they call mass psychosis. The chief characteristic of this state is that when ordinary people with their already feeble mentation which at such times becomes still feebler, receive shocks from the maleficent stories of some lunatic or other. They become in the full sense of the word victims of these malicious stories and manifest themselves completely automatically. And further on, to every man, and also of course to me, it is quite easy to prove anything whatever. All you need to know is which shocks and which associations to arouse in the various brains while one or another truth is being proved. It is even easy to prove to a man that our whole world and all the people in it are nothing but an illusion and that the authenticity and reality of the world are nothing but a corn, and what is more, a corn on the big toe of his left foot. Apart from this corn, nothing in the world exists. Everything only seems, and even then, only to psychopaths squared. So he's talking about the effect of shocks and how using shocks you can make anybody believe anything even that the world doesn't exist but something interesting that I, I'm going to try to describe is the modern love of science of people if I go and sit in one of the coffee shops around here and I listen to the tables very frequently I hear people talk about science science this science that did you hear about this I saw that oh really very interesting where have these people been <laughs> did they spend the morning in the chemistry laboratory or perhaps in the morning they were at CERN conducting particle physics. Is that where they were? <laughs> Not on your life. You know where they were. They were staring at their phone. They were staring at the internet. They were memorizing the BBC. In fact, not memorizing, they were sitting in front of the BBC, which was flashing images in their eyes. And that is how they have accustomed to begin and continue their day. And if stories are very juicy, for instance, if they claim to have the answer to everything, then <laughs> they will pay even more attention. And then when they're in the cafes, they can talk about science. And it sounds good, doesn't it? It sounds like you've done something really good and you identify yourself with this really good thing. In the same way as you can talk about progress. About the progress of technology in the world. Did you hear about AI? My camera has... My, my phone has three cameras on it. And it's as if it has something to do with you. You identify yourself with these... Um, 
technological things. And it makes you feel good. Oh, but of course, these three camera iPhone has absolutely nothing to do with you at all. And neither does science have anything to do with you. But it makes you feel good. Now, what does um, Gurdjieff says about the has namas that he does everything to conceal his real state. He never wants anybody to see him. And he never wants to see himself. So he, um, he craves objects with which to identify himself. Now, the Buddhists call that, that craving suffering. You're, you're craving something to disguise yourself with, to identify yourself with. Why? Because you have no stable center, because you don't know who you are. You're not initiated in your soul. Or in Gurdjieff's terms, you exist solely as, um, solely for the purposes of a process that is external to you. Going back to the cafe, so people talk about science and they On the news t today, in this era, the shocks are intense. The journalists, of course they're listening to journalists, journalists who are the lowest category of people in society, more or less, rather than scientists. And the journalists have worked out a way of shocking people, shocking in all sorts of ways. For instance, they, they may be a, a headline, married couple um, saves cat from the tree. And you click into that article so that you can see the whole thing. And there's a picture of this married couple. But it's nothing like what you expected at all. This couple and this marriage is... I'm sure you can imagine what it is. And this shock is deliberate. The psychological shock keeps you coming back for more. And the journalists know this. Now the effect of um, reading science on the BBC is this. The science, um, the words and the concepts, they stimulate your mental center and they connect to it very strong emotional or even sexual energy like strong vibrant emotional tugging at the moment there is a sense of it's us against them it's the science against those people who are resisting science there's very strong like warlike um drum beating and this creates very strong wrong work the incorrect functioning of your being and it creates very strong associations which if you ever wanted to remove them would be very hard and it's the mental center is being externally manipulated by the news and it's being associated with these wrong energies energies from different centers, the emotional or the um, even the instinctive. How you should use the mental center is first of all on its own and second of all you must make being confrontations so that that means that if somebody says something whether it's on the BBC or anywhere else, that you must reflect on the ideas that they're giving you and compare them to your existing ideas and your sense of reality, your own experiences. Does this make sense to me in terms of my own experiences of life? That is how you should do it. But that is active work. For instance, if some science is mentioned somewhere 
then you should go and get that scientific paper and read it until you understand it and then make the being confrontation. If you don't do that, what you're really doing is a type of mental masturbation. And this entire society is engaged in mental masturbation. And the result of that is that your mental center no longer functions. After that, it's very interesting to me that people who like to talk about science, if you actually turn back towards them and you talk about science, you mention particular studies, particular conclusions, they will reject it. They will not like you for it. Because when they talk about science, they're talking about a certain kind of mental masturbation where the BBC is puppeting their mind, their mental faculties, and associating it with a very juicy energy. But if you actually start talking about science, they will not like it. And what I often find is such people then say, oh, no one should have an opinion. No one's allowed to have an opinion. Who are you to have an opinion? And the reason that they do that is that they have, they have not taken any responsibility to understand anything themselves. What they talk, when they talk about science, they mean just listening to people turn their mental process and associate it with something uh, emotional. They, they, they like to pretend it's a good thing science but in fact they have damaged themselves and not just um, in the short term because the effect of being shocked and associating um, juicy energies with your mental faculties really damages your ability to, to think to process to to reason